Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, saints. We thank God for another opportunity <clears throat> that he has given us uh, to share the bread of life. I am Mama Sims of Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry, uh, or Evangelist Sims. Uh, I'm going to answer a question from one of our listeners. Uh, she wanted to know how could they conquer sinful or destructive thoughts? Um, and uh, we'll get right into the word of the Lord after this short prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your mercies and grace endureth forever. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We consider it a privilege every time we have an opportunity to share the word of God with each other. Even as the listeners are listening, I am also learning from you because I ask and I pray that the Holy Spirit use my mind, use my faculties to bring forth this word. Without you, the word of the Lord has been clear to us that we cannot do anything. Let me, let me decrease and may you increase. We cover the listeners in the place that I'm giving this word with the blood of Jesus that this word may go and fulfill that which you desire in the lives of those that are listening, including my own. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, saints. This is part of a playlist uh, that was requested the previous week by a particular group on WhatsApp uh, that we teach about sin. And uh, this is just a result of that. And uh, the, les the lessons and the play playlist in English, we will be put on the channel, YouTube channel for Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry. We do also have audios available. If somebody comes through the WhatsApp link on the description and makes a request, we can send it to them directly by WhatsApp or by using the Telegram app. The Lord bless you. So when I heard this lesson, when, sorry, when I heard this uh, question, immediately the verse that came to mind was Isaiah 26 verse 3, which reads thus, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. We are most of us are aware that sin begins in the mind. Sin begins in our thoughts. It's almost like somebody was giving a, a, an analogy or, or, or an example that a bird builds a nest step by step. It starts with a few leaves, a few twigs here and there, and it builds up, it becomes a nest that he can do things in it, hatch eggs, have babies, raise children in it. The same way our mind. If one thought comes, that's just the beginning. Let's say, oh, I'm tempted to go and steal something. Or I look at something and I, I want that uh, thing that I'm looking at. And uh, thoughts come of uh, unlawful means of obtaining that item. So that is the time in the beginning. Unless somebody deals with the thoughts in the beginning, negative, sinful, or destructive thoughts, dealing with them, dealing with them in the beginning, right, they call it nip it in the bud. Unless that's dealt with at the very onset, it grows and uh, things just get worse and worse and worse. And the more you think about something, the easier it becomes to fulfill it. That is with the positive things and negative things. If I'm thinking about how I'm going to hurt someone, get back at someone, like payback, revenge, the more easier it will become when an opportunity arises for me to do some harm to that person. And many of us forget. We will be judged by our 
prolonged and repented thoughts. What is unforgiveness? Somebody might argue with that. Oh, thoughts. No, no, no. We've been called to walk the narrow way. Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. Anything that seems easy, anything that seems like uh, it's a shortcut, anything that we make an excuse for, very likely that is along the lines of the wide road that leads to destruction. So once you know and you believe, you understand that we will be judged by our thoughts, it will help you. Somebody might argue, oh, I cannot be be judged by just, um, just thinking about something. If you don't repent of it, don't take your, don't take your eternal life. Don't gamble on your eternal destination. Every one of us, we are preparing for an eternal forever destination. And I started talking about, give an example of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is mostly in the mind. Most of the time it stays in the mind. Now we can go into the all psychological, physiological effects of unforgiveness. Really unforgiveness hurts us. The people that we are holding it against, most of them, they go on about their own lives. They don't even know about it. Most of them. And some that know about it, many of them do not really care, do not care to repent. We need to forgive for ourselves. To be free spiritually, to be free psychologically, to be free physiologically. There are some psychological effects of unforgiveness. You know, pressure, tension, uh, stress, anxiety, PTSD, all these things. And physiological. Blood, high blood pressure. Uh, all kind of conditions. I came across in my nursing career of a woman, at least two cases. The syndrome, I believe, is called Takasubo. It, it's broken heart syndrome, literally. The person was hurt in their life, disappointed. I believe it was a relationship. She ended up with a heart condition. And I believe it was incurable. We could only give medications to manage symptoms. And I will, I will speak briefly about unforgiveness. The Bible is clear. All you have to do, Google I like to Google. In many cases, it's convenient. We know it's temporary. And we know the creators of Google, they are not of God. We know that. But use it to your advantage. The same way these social media platforms, we are using them for the glory of God. You will see the word of the Lord is clear that if we don't forgive, we will, not, we will be judged. We will not end up eternally in a good place. So, Thoughts. Thoughts is where the enemy begins to plant a seed for sin to become to fruition. That's why we need to guard our thoughts. We need to take steps to fight, to stay in uh, the mindset of Jesus. Romans 12 verse 2 reads thus, and be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to remember this, especially in these last days, technology is at our fingertips. The mind is being fed from what we look at, what we listen to, what we meditate upon. That means if someone does not feed their mind with the word of God consistently, with sound doctrine, sound teachings, sound preaching, I'm talking about preachings not just to soothe you, encourage you, tell you only about blessings and they don't tell you or warn you about sin. They don't warn you about being unholy. 
and holiness is a topic that is rarely preached in these last days in many uh, platforms for saints, for Christians. So if we don't keep our mind fed with those things, we will see our thought pattern. We will get used to the thought pattern and justify our thought patterns being unholy, wrong, evil, and not leading us towards Jesus, not leading us towards uh, making it into heaven. And what does that mean? We will be dwelling, it's almost, and most of this happens uh, unconsciously. Sub, we don't even uh, think too much about it. The, the, the environment around us has conditioned us. And many of us, we find ourselves, we are saved. We tell ourselves we are saved. I'm going to heaven. But we are on the wide road where the masses are walking. We are on the wide road towards eternal damnation, hellfire, period. So we need to remember always our environment, especially these last days, is consistently con conditioning us to accept sin, to be comfortable with sin, to justify and understand sin. I'm not saying we should be judgmental. If you see the video, uh, the cover, it includes all kind of sins that cannot be seen. Sorry. The cover that I, I made uh, for the lesson that says there is a category of sin, category of sin, of sins that are not seen. They are not visible to the naked eye. I call them spiritual sins. Some might argue with some of them, but you know what? Sin is sin. I, I'm going to give the lesson. That's another separate lesson. I will give it as the Lord is leading me to. And I ask that the Lord forgive me if I added or deleted anything to what he gave me to speak about on that lesson. Sins that cannot be seen, not visible to the naked eye. This was part of a series that I did in Swahili as a request of that particular group. It's a group of uh, uh, believers that requested that for the week. So going back to this topic, we need to remember that our world, our environment around us is conditioning us to get used to sin. And even if it's also conditioning us that even if we see it, we recognize that this is wrong, this is sin, not to do anything about it. So you can say, oh, Mama Sims, what, what, what can we do? You know, we are in this world. We, we got to leave and then let leave. And we are told to be tolerant. I'm saying amen, amen to all that. But we also need to remember, we shall be judged according to the word of the Lord. The scriptures, the word that's in this Bible. I will never forget, I heard a woman uh, of, of God testify her previous life before she was saved. She was into a cult group, satanic worshippers group, and their main assignment, one of her assignment, was to bring down churches, spiritual churches that are strong in the Lord and in the word, holiness churches. And she said they took them for training. They were studying the word of this Bible. Their leader told them, we need to find a way the weaknesses of the preacher, the weaknesses of the church members, church leaders, elders, intercessors, find a weakness in their life and see what verse we can cause them to go against in this book. They studied the Bible for that reason. I would say, brother, my brother in the Lord, my sister in the Lord, you need to refuse to have anybody else. That is against God, know more about the Bible than you. You need to make up in your mind that the angel that we each have, we have at least one angel or more. That's steady writing and recording everything we say and do, and I believe everything we think about. If right now I think, remember, if I think that I want to kill somebody, I bet you 
there is a judgment for those th- thoughts. If you look at the book of Proverbs 23 verse 7, it reads thus, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. And I also remember that verse talks about the Lord is saying, They worship me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Always be conscious. Always be on the winning side. That your thoughts will be according to the word of the Lord. If I think I want to hurt somebody. If if he had, if the verse says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If I think I'm, I'm going to kill somebody, I'm a murderer. If I think I want to hurt somebody, I have hurt them. Tell me something. Why is it that the verse that talks about if a man looks, if somebody looks at a woman and in the lustful way, meaning they're thinking lustful thoughts, they have already sinned in their heart. They have committed the sin of lust. This proves this word right here. It proves this word. So we need to be, when we are aware of that, you will be resisting the things you look at. Commercials with sexual enniendos, people ha- walking around half naked. What do you do if it gets warm and people start walking around half naked? Just, like, just turn your eyes and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, help that person. Lord, cleanse me. Sanctify me. You need to understand Thoughts defile, and nothing defile shall, shall enter heaven. Remember, Revelation twenty-one twenty-seven reads thus, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Something that defiles is 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 it something that's unclean unholy there is all kinds of things around us that are unclean and unholy do not tell me that there is no judgment for what we look at and dwell on and don't repent what we listen to and don't repent i play on the side of walking on the narrow way I don't go on the comfortable, lenient side. When I begin to pray, I start with repenting. Lord, forgive me in my thoughts, words, and actions. Sins of omission, sins of commission. If I remember something, if I was talking to someone and I realized I was talking too much, I realized I spoke about someone in a way that it's almost like we're gossiping about them, When I finish my conversations, I repent. When I finish teaching here, I'm going to search myself. Lord, did did I teach according to your standards? Did I leave out anything? I live that way. My life experience has taught me to take life as a gift. To take life every new day as an opportunity to make it right with God. Any opportunity, any day that I have, and I'm I'm breathing to prepare for the rapture because the rapture can happen anytime. Let me tell you, I like to work hard. I work hard on my career. I work hard on uh, having a high quality of life. I love, I have hobbies. I love gardening. I love uh, cooking. I love uh, leading a healthy lifestyle and teaching others about the same. I love God's people and to encourage them, but at the forefront, I try and keep at my forefront the thought. Remember, we're talking about thoughts, fighting and conquering negative, sinful, and destructive thoughts. I think about heaven and rapture and preparing for it. I always say salvation is free, but making it into heaven, I am free. It's by grace. 
We cannot do anything without the Lord, but there are steps that we got to take. There are decisions we got to make. There are people and things we need to let go. There are some things that appease the flesh that we need to let go. Find other ways of relaxing, entertaining ourselves that do not put us on the gray area. Am I going to make heaven or not? Period. Thoughts. Being aware and conscious of our thoughts. Where are they going? Somebody might say something to offend you. We need to guard our thoughts. You get offended, you get angry, you get upset, and the thoughts keep going and going and going, and you end up in a whole lot of judgment, a whole lot of things. Remember, there are books. Read the book of Revelation. There are books that will be open. Make sure, you and I need to make sure, Books of those that don't forgive. Books of those that think about hurting other people. Books of those that uh, lie, that ghost. There's all kind of books. Make sure. That's why we need to repent. We tell people that we counsel under Jesus reigns, restoration ministry. We tell them, new believers, put an alarm every three hours to remind you in the middle of what you're doing, you pray. Pray in your thoughts, pray in your heart, even for five minutes. Start with that short repentance that I said about, it clears the way for your prayers to be heard. Don't be saying, oh, I got saved in 1954. I don't have to repent again. Oh, my goodness. You are gambling with you making heaven. Because the same way as we live this life, we need to go take a shower. Many times, if you are in a tropical country, sometimes three times a day you need a shower. Same way. It will not hurt anything and it will help a lot if you pray frequently and start with your prayers with repentance. Clears the way. Remember, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Believe me, he is standing over there. I believe somewhere that he's allowed to stand and say, oh, see, Lord, see. Oh, he is praying about this. No, 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 no. He's guilty of such, such and such. Oh. She's praying about this. No, don't listen. She, she, we, can, we have permission to block her prayers. We have permission to touch her family. We have permission to touch her health because of things we don't repent. And this is all begins, most of it begins in the, th- in the mind. So the trick to end it in our mind, nip it in the bud in our mind, is Philippians 4, 8, which reads thus, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That is how you conquer negative, sinful, and destructive thoughts. Now, this verse right here, we, you and I, we got to take it in and we got to seek the Lord, ask the Lord, plead with the Lord for us to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to show us the Holy Ghost based on where we are with Jesus to tell us, how to show us, remind us how to obey this scripture right here. That's how you win the battle in, your, in our minds. That's how we win the battle in our minds. The enemy wants that real estate in our mind. Some things don't dwell on it. Somebody will tell you something cutting, negative. Think about this. I forgive them. They're having a bad day. Move on. Somebody straight up insults you, say, Lord, forgive me because I'm getting upset with this person. They are causing my blood pressure to come up. They are not justified to insult me. But Lord, I understand that the enemy uses people and the enemy is trying to get to me through this person. Forgive me for my thoughts. Forgive them. Help deliver them. Help them understand they are creating a judgment on themselves. That's how you deal with offenses. It's all in the mind. 
You notice it was all in the mind. And sometimes somebody straight up offends you. They hurt you. You say something to retaliate. Boom. It's like reflex. Why? Based on where we are with Jesus, where Jesus found us. It gets better on us controlling ourselves as we continue to walk with the Lord. And if you, if you walk with the Lord, you can fight that. You can see it coming. Holy Ghost will tell you, be careful. Watch out. This is going to happen. He's going to give you a warning. That's why people that get saved, we tell them, Acts 2.38, after you repent, after you baptize in Jesus' name, you need to seek the infilling of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. Ain't no shortcut. That's how you get saved. Acts 2.38. That is how you walk the winning walk. That's how you walk victoriously. That's how you don't leave to chance you making it heaven. Be proactive. Let the rapture find you striving towards Jesus, seeking the Lord, living holy. Holiness is inside and outside. Thoughts, words, action. Are you truly uh, guarding taking care of the temple of the Holy Ghost. That which the Lord say, he who de destroys, defiles the temple of the Holy Ghost, God will destroy them. The verse is, I like to quote the verses for our uh, people that understand they got to learn scripture. That's why I like to look where the verse is. Is to help me, to help them, and keep me from being judged by teaching uh, off the word of God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is where you'll find this verse. And we encourage this verse to be a memory verse for most of our new believers. All of our new believers. Actually all of the believers that follow uh, the lessons under Jesus' reigns restoration ministry. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians verse 3. Sorry, chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. It reads thus, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is a holy, which temple are ye? This memory, this, see this scripture here, if you memorize it, it will help you a whole lot. And, I would encourage you when you in your devotion time with the Lord, use this scripture. Use this scripture for repenting. It will, it, it will help you. Remember, the Lord uh, is quick to fulfill his word. He will, uh, he will answer our prayers, especially if we, they are according to the word of God. If you are struggling in this area, say, Lord, forgive me today. I believe I defiled your temple. I listened to that which should not be. I looked at things that are unholy. And I took on some things that are not, are not holy. You know there are things you can put on your body that are not holy? Defiled items? Google that up. It's there. You can dress in a way that is unholy. That is something to repent. I cannot walk around with tight skirts. Revealing clothes? No, 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 no. I cannot put on things on my body that are contradicting with God creating me. Putting eyeshadow, heavy makeup, all kind of makeup. For me personally, Holy Ghost has warned me against makeup. I'm speaking my own testimony. I don't wear makeup. I, I keep thinking, the Lord could call me home any second. I will not be found with no makeup on. I will not be found with fake hair on my head. I will not be found uncovered. My head is not covered. I pray all the time. That's why I choose to cover my head all the time. That's just me. And there's many women. I'm just saying this as a side note. Many women around the world. There is a move of holiness. I'm just telling you what's going on. Why? The rapture can happen any second, any minute. So be careful. You and I, we need to be careful 
what we dwell on, what we think about, is preparing us for the rapture. Remember, the rapture will be within a second. Read Matthew 24 and 27. Rapture is real and it's in the Bible. It could happen any minute, any second. That's why we live accordingly. That's why you see some of us, although I teach frequently on social media and I counsel people, I am never overconfident. Oh, that I got it. I made it. I'm going to make it hell. No, 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 no. I live. I work up my salvation with fear and trembling because I want to make sure I am pleasing the Lord. I'm pleasing the master. I'm on the good side. My book is written in the Lamb's book of life. Speaking of which, my goodness, do not be overconfident. Live in any kind of way, thinking any kind of thoughts that your book cannot be taken off the Lamb's book of life. Do not do that to yourself. Teach your children the same way. Our children, we pray for them, but we need to tell them, those that will listen, they cannot live on mama and papa's prayer. They cannot make heaven holding on to our skirts. They need to make heaven on their own. Anybody from three, four years old, once they know they're about, they know good and wrong, teach them about the Lord, teach them about salvation, teach them about holiness, teach them about sin, teach them about heaven and hell to, according to their level. The ones that are grown and we tell them when we can and they don't, their blood cannot be over our head. We cannot be judged for them not obeying the word of the Lord. We love them with all our hearts. We need to travail fast and pray for them. We should have no peace. Yes, they make their own decisions, but I will not be a wicked mother a cruel mother. Remember, the Bible said we will judge our family members. Can you imagine us having to judge our own children, knowing they are going to eternal suffering? What kind of mother will I be? What kind of sister will I be? What kind of cousin will I be? And I have a lot of them in all kind of faith, believe me. So, going back to our thoughts. This, in short, what I've spoken about is how you win the battle in your mind. This is how you win. This is how you please the Lord. So I thank you for listening th thus far. If anybody wants the audios to these teachings, we have them. Uh, we can share them with you. You will need a WhatsApp app or a Telegram app. Use that link under this message. Uh, it's leading to our receiving group. When you go in that group, please be patient with us. Uh, somebody will come and listen to you and greet you and take care of you. After we listen to you, we will take you off that group because we will save your number for future communication because that's a receiving group for our counseling as well. People come in, some people put on their personal stuff there and we want to protect them. So it's a temporary group. Those that want to, we have a Swahili-based Bible study group, Bible question group uh, on WhatsApp. Uh, we, we join people in that group and continue to minister to them that way. And there are ministers in that group as well. So the Lord bless you and keep you. Again, I am Evangelist Sims of Jesus Reigns Restoration Ministry. And thank you for listening. We're praying for you to be successful in your walk with the Lord. Successful how? Make heaven. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you. Talk to you on another message.